Good morning. God bless you. We want to welcome everyone here that's Amen. here and also online. God Amen. bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Let's start our service with a word of prayer together, please. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, dear Lord Jesus, thank you for bringing us here, Lord God, and um, throughout all it's december 3rd lord it's already december lord and we just yeah. to say thank you lord jesus oh. for bringing us uh, this way lord god yes. and even though we were not even looking for you lord jesus you came and you looked for us Amen. and you found us lord jesus and we're just so grateful for your grace and your mercy and your kindness to us up, up until now lord we just ask you lord jesus we we approach your your presence lord jesus we approach your throne of mercy and grace lord god with humble hearts lord knowing that oh you are the only one who has what we are looking for lord jesus this morning lord we we know that we'll either leave here better or worse lord god in our sincere desire lord our sincere hearts desire and prayer is that we would leave here closer to you lord jesus we ask that you would make your presence known allow us to enter into your presence lord jesus where lord god just one moment in your presence can change yes. the whole world for us lord god yes. we just we uh, present every single person that's within the sound of our of our voices lord god and, and and be able to join us lord god in worship and praise and to hear from you lord god we really do want to hear from you this morning lord we don't take anything for granted lord jesus just here we're taking one day at a time lord god and just ask that you would visit us lord god and fulfill your promise in your word we know that you know your word, but your prophet taught us that you love to be reminded of your promises, Lord God. So here we are, more than two and three, the two or three that are gathered together in your name, Lord God, asking you to fulfill your word, to come and visit us, Lord Jesus, to to speak to us, to heal us, Lord God, and to draw us closer to you and make us more like you. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask it. Amen. Amen. It's going to, before you're seated, if you don't mind, um, we're going to read a psalm, Psalm 86, the first few verses together. If you would, bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O thou, my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Amen. God bless you. Man, God bless you. Let us. How many say amen to the, yeah. to the psalm, to the word of God? Amen. amen. Yeah. God bless you, those that are watching, those that are joining. Uh, we, we pray that the Lord will, will touch you special, answer your prayer and your request. Let us, let us sing the circuit rider preacher. Circuit rider preacher went riding through the land with a rifle on his shoulder and a Bible in his hand. He called the prairie people of the blessed Palestine as he went He preached the 
circuit rider preacher amen yes let us continue to worship and let's bask in the sun of, of the lord jesus christ amen uh, let us sing shine on me shine on me
petitions and offering. How many are thankful here Amen. for the Amen. Lord? Amen. No matter what He may have done, how small and how great, I says, how Amen. many are happy? I says, Amen. thank you, Lord. We have a lot to be thankful for. Amen. We're going to go to the unspoken requests. Um, Brother Ernie Wuruna Sr. has three unspoken requests. Um, the Lord knows all things. Uh, we also have a petition for Brother Gonzalo Huerta. Um, the Lord knows his need. He, he needs a, more than a touch, but we ask that the Lord will answer his prayer. Um, we're going to go to, as Brother Alex comes and prays, we're going to go to the offering, the tithing, and the petitions. Let's stand up for a little bit. Amen. Honor the Lord Jesus Christ with our, our, our presence. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful this morning for another day, Lord, uh, another opportunity, Lord, to, to, to come and make things right. Uh, we're thankful for Calvary. Yes. When you make things all right. And we just don't know what to say, like the opening prayer, our brother Ernie, which is nothing we did. We did it all. Amen. So we're thankful for your mercy and for your grace. You elected us. You selected us, Lord. You know who we are. You know what we're doing. You hear our prayers, Lord. But this morning, we're asking you, in your kindness and in your mercy, won't you come down to us, Lord, and, and answer our prayers, Lord? We know as believers that you do hear our prayers. And this morning, we, we want to know that you've heard our prayers and if you'll answer them, Lord, in your mercy and your grace. Bless those that are in compliments of Brother Ernie, ourselves, Lord Jesus. We're, we're all having a tough time, Lord Jesus. It's hard, Lord Jesus. We know that, but we know there's victory ahead of us, Lord. And you've given us that possession because it's written in your word, and we take your word and believe your word. We ask you, Lord, now that Anyone that's in the audience there in the in the Facebook or or in the internet, Lord Jesus. Whatever they have need of, let them reach out to you now, Lord Jesus. Your precious Holy Spirit as it passes by, let them just touch them, Lord Jesus. Would you touch them, Lord Jesus? Heal their bodies, yes. their minds, their souls, their spirits, Lord. Make them whole again, Lord Jesus. Amen. You're you're not a halfway God. You're a, no, a true man. God. You started the work on us. You're the author man. and also the finisher. And we thank you for that, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the healing, for the salvation, because you've already done it. And we thank you for it publicly, Lord. This morning, we also ask you for the tithe, the tithing and the offering. Bless it and bless the triple giver. And we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Before you take your seats, let us give the Lord a clap offering once again. Amen. <laughs> you may be seated. Let us sing and come and dine. Jesus has the table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people to come and die. The winter's Thank you. 
still stands for those that are watching, those that are here, to come and dine. Amen. Let us, uh, we're going to move to the, uh, where we're going to feast on the word, <laughs> where it says come and dine, and let us open up our hearts and prepare ourselves as we prepare ourselves to hear uh, the word of God. Let us sing, the chorus only, fill my cup. I know we haven't sang that in a long time, but it is just open up our hearts. Feel my God, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsty. salvation Lord bring us healing Lord bring us a filling of your Holy Spirit Lord as we lift our cups Lord to you Lord Jesus only to you Lord Jesus only you can fill it Lord not only fill it but Lord let it overrun Lord Jesus let it fill let it break over the edge Lord Jesus and just run over as when they poured the anointing oil over David Lord Jesus don't do it sparingly, Lord Jesus, but just fill us, Lord, we ask, Lord Jesus. Those that are watching, Lord, we ask that you answer their prayers, Lord, their desires, Lord Jesus. May you heal them, may you fill them, Lord Jesus. May you give them, may they eat of the bread of, the bread of life, Lord. We ask all things, Lord Jesus, 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 How many just love that song? Man, there's got to be a thirsting in the soul in order to be filled. Yes. And there are many people that are thirsting. Yes. But some people don't know what they're thirsting for. Yes. So it's it's very important to show the people and the, those that are watching this is the real thirsting. If there's a thirst, there's a quench, thirst quencher. I'm not talking about Circle K or for a thirst quencher or one of those. That I'm talking about the real holy thirst that God had put into your soul. And made man to thirst in that manner. Yes, to thirst for life. For thirst for a healer. For, to thirst for God. But Satan's evil hands have taken hold of people and perverted that thirst into an unholy thirst. But the true thirst in man is a thirst for God. Yes. It's because a man is and a woman that starts to thirst, they thirst and they have to have answers. Where did I come from? Where am I going to go? Right. Why am I going through these trials? There's got to be a God, and, and God, show Amen. me. Manifest yourself to me. I'm right. thirsting for you. And when the man or woman starts to want to thirst and starts to cry out, there's when Jesus Christ yes. steps on the scene. It's all part of what we've been talking about, at least I've been talking about, is that weakness is the beginning of perfection. We have to believe that we are we are nothing. It says that we are the least of many. Mm -hmm. And we are weak. And at our weakest point, when you cry out, and you cry out to God, He shows up. Uh, uh, he will show up on the scene. Wow. And we're praying that, that God will show uh, Himself to you and change your mind, change your spirit, so that, that, that you, you can clearly see. Now I see. Now I see. Now I understand. The true meaning of see is to understand. Not to see what, what you see here. But it's to truly understand. Say, Lord, you really love me. Lord, you're calling me. Lord, you really want me to live a holy life. And he wants all these things. He surely has provided all things for you. Yes. All we have to do is... Accept it and walk in it. Amen. God bless each and every one of you, especially those that are watching right now. Um, we're going to just quickly recap those that um, missed yesterday, uh, last Sunday. Those that, um, uh, that would like just to know what, what I've been talking about. The Lord put this on my heart and... and and uh, November 12th was the last time we spoke. Uh, I spoke on the subject, weakness, the beginning of perfection. It was number two. And I took the scriptures. We're just going to do a quick review. And it was Hebrews 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And then we also use in Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. And when Abram was 19 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me Amen. and be thou perfect. And then we're going to go with the, a quote from Israel and the church, number one, 1953, 0325. Abraham, I have done it already. It ain't nothing you've done, you've got to do. I've done it myself. And real quickly, this is the real importance is this. Is that those that are looking to change, you don't have to change. <laughs> Jesus Christ did the changing for you. You don't have to work on yourself. You just have to accept Him. And He does the work in you if you allow Him to do it. Yeah. Amen. This is, uh, it has to come. We can't force you. I can't force anybody. 
that says, but he can do it. Yeah. Amen. Because he's done it all by himself. I've done it myself. Amen. Oh my, when I think of that, God did it himself. Unconditional. Oh Lord. God's covenant is unconditional. That was just shutting a lot of naysayers up right now. Why are you trying to change me and this, this, and that? If you would just read the Bible, go to where Abraham and just transport yourself there. Put your name in there. God called Esteban. What was Esteban doing when God called him? Absolutely everything in the world. Most horrible life. Bondage. That's right. Uh, garbage, yeah. parties, drinking, smoking, torturing them, mind and being tortured. But when God called, there was a separation. Uh, it says, I didn't do anything. <laughs> he did it for me. Amen. That's the, that is the amazing thing. Yes. That's where uh, it was very important. I, 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 just to, to recap, yes. if you weren't here, God did it for you. Here we go. Thank you, Lord. Unconditional covenant that God made with his people. Paragraph 83. So God is so determined to save the people. He made this covenant. He was determined to save man. So he made it unconditionally. He swore by himself not, not have the man to do anything <laughs> into it. Wow. Amen. <laughs> now, now we're going to continue. This is where, yeah, December 3rd, okay, today, weakness, the beginning of perfection, and the sub is anything too impossible for God. <laughs> and, and, and I just wanted to let that set just a little bit. I'm going to pray one more time because you can never pray enough. And then we're going to read Psalms if you'd like to uh, stand up. And we're going to read Psalms wow. 113. Wow. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we oh. love you, Lord Jesus. You. Lord, we ask that this word will help. Your word will help somebody, Lord. Lord, feed us. Help me. Help us. Help those that are watching, Lord. Help them to give them courage, Lord Jesus, to stand for you, to stand for your word, Lord. There are many people, they love the worship. They love to clap their hands. They love to sing. But, Lord, when it comes to your word, they start to shake, Lord Jesus, because they don't they don't have confidence because of their old teaching, the, what, what they've been brought up under. They've been brought up under uh, uh, dogmas and creeds of man. And they have failed. But your word, it says, my word shall never fail. My word shall never be broken. And it says, heavens and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. That is your word. And you are Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, we thank you for that. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if you were reasoning, say, why is he, did he pray like that? It's because many people, they're scared. When they brought up under a Catholic dogma or a creed or a belief, there's actually, they're scared. So when they hear the word of God, say, oh, we're not supposed to hear the word of God. We're supposed to hear it from the priest. Ah, so they start to get shaky. They start, I'm not attacking anybody, but they, they fear. I, I have a cousin that says, have you been baptized? Yeah, I was baptized in prison. I was baptized in the name of the wow. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, a Catholic priest. But I said, well, how about you doing it the, the Bible way? Wow. And when I said the Bible way in Acts 2.38, and he started to shake and get scared. He said, hey, I, I don't know about that. What do you mean you don't know about that? You're still going to get baptized in the right name. He says, not in titles. I said, do you know what the titles are referring to? It says, name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He's all, no, I said that's the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it says you, let's let's take care of that business, and he he kind of left very scared. So I know that that when when something is pronounced over yes. them yes. wrongfully, that a curse or a curse of fear comes over them. Yes. But God is not a, a God of confusion. Right. Amen. Let us go to Psalms one thirteen. The 
Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God who dwelleth on high, who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth. You may be seated. So the subtitle, I have a thought that I had, and it, to help you, maybe you will start to ponder on it. That's why it's it's said in that manner. It says, think about it. Is anything too impossible for God? So we're going to start, and those that are watching, you can start to scratch your head and say, start looking around and, and say, well, if I just see it in the Word, this is, it'll help you out. Job spoke of it. Job 26, 13. By his spirit, he hath garnished the heavens. His hand hath formed the crooked serpent. Lo, these are parts of his ways. But how little a portion is heard of him. But the thunder of his power who can understand. Job 26 verse 10. He hath compassed the waters with bounds. Until the day and night come to an end. Yes. The pillars of heaven tremble and are astonished at his reproof. Mm -hmm. He divided the sea with his power and by his understanding he smited through the proud. Yes. Beautiful how he's Job, brother Job, <laughs> is saying these parables. This is a man perfect. When yes. Satan approached God and, and God says, where have you been, Satan? He says, oh, I've been walking to and fro. <laughs> and it's, oh, he walks to and fro from earth. Uh -huh. And he goes, have you considered my my perfect my perfect Job and he says no I haven't but I bet you I can get him to curse you in front of your face mm -hmm. and he says I know you can't because he's perfect man and he's beautiful and he brought him down to the most weakest where everybody turned on him his wife spoke wrong he says why don't you curse God he says curse God he says woman you speak like a foolish woman yeah. and he says uh, Curse God. Why would I curse God? And even his church members and his brethren came and, uh -huh. and started saying, You're a secret sinner. Yes, yes, but when he started to contemplate and everything, right. he said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Right. He took all his children and everything. But Job was perfect enough yes, that what we should be doing right. is preparing ourselves for the Lord. Right. What he did, he says, and Perhaps my children may have sinned. Yes. He went uh, placing them on blood, uh, uh, underneath the blood sacrifice. Preparing a sacrifice for each and every one of them. Isn't that an awesome father, an awesome parent? Perhaps pleading the blood. He said, Lord, I know he, my son is out of his mind. He's whacked out. He's flipping out. He's doing so many things. He's in prison or my daughter is out there doing this. But Lord, I plead the yes. blood of Jesus Christ upon yes. her. Lord Jesus, and one day he says, not only these words are not spoken in vain, in vain yes. but uh, or, or idle words, but when you speak these words and believe on these words, it says God takes these words and he fulfills them. Why? Because it's the inner thirst. It's that Holy Spirit within each and every one of us that is doing the speaking. Man. And when you speak these words, but here Job is describing the power of Almighty God. And, and, and that's what we're just trying to, to help you. Yes. No matter what your situation. We just, we had um, a Thanksgiving, as everybody. And it always seems that, that uh, there's always a different conversation uh -huh. that takes the, uh, uh, <laughs> the point at, at the Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. And all I could hear this Thanksgiving was... Uh, it was like a bunch, I'm sorry, but it seemed like the old ladies, I'm gonna, they all came to the table and they all started pulling out, I take this pill and then that pill, the doctor said this and the doctor said take this shot and I, I could tell you the names, but I'm not going to glorify these names. 
And, and I couldn't believe in how much of diabetes this and diabetes that. Oh, yeah. I take this pill and I feel great and this and that. And I'm like, oh, oh, ugh. And I'm like, what the? Well, why don't we just talk about something positive? Then all of a sudden, on the other side, the uh, Dallas Cowboys this, the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> this. And I'm like, oh, let's talk about Thanksgiving, how thankful I am that I am breathing, that I have another option, another opportunity to come and talk to you about Jesus. <laughs> Instead of that, or oh, how oh, this food was good. Nobody said anything about how the food was good. <laughs> I, I, unless I didn't hear it, nobody said, can I get an Amen. Okay, nobody said, oh, Stefan, you made these awesome pies. <laughs> oh, they're so delicious. <laughs> and I, I took through all the sugar on, I put a little substitute in there. And I said, so it's a healthy pie, so you can have double. <laughs> but nobody said anything about how good these pies were, you know, even the mashed potatoes. People were saying, well, I'm kind of, the, the conversation, well, I want something new. Let's make some chile colorado or some barbecue ribs. And I'm like, huh. I can tell you that something new that's within you that's crying out for something new was not a new for food. It was for the food of God. It's for the bread of life was actually within your soul crying out. You're actually you're asking for a change, but not a change of food. You're asking which it is actually. You're eating off the off the world, off the tree of knowledge, but within your soul you're actually asking for a change within your heart. And that's what we, we need. We need a change. And only one who could do that change is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. The Word of God made flesh. Now, that's, uh, and so I left. I left. I was like, I'm tired. Uh, I'm tired. I'm, I'm serious. I'm tired. Okay, uh, if, if you hear about, but they won't stand to hear about, I know somebody who could take that away. I know somebody who's a healer. I know somebody yeah. who can help you. Uh -huh. But they were so content and happy about bragging about what pill a new shot. <laughs> I, uh, I, I've seen commercials and they and they're pushing this shot. Yes. Um, yes. yes. I, I it just slipped my mind. But the, it, they were oh my doctor gave me this oh once a week or once every two weeks and this I feel good I'm like ah. <laughs> my mind I, I was just bombarded. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I didn't even hear anything about the food. But here, this is the food. This is the this is honey. <laughs> it says this food of, of the word of God. But when it starts to digest in people's lives and they're not living right, it's like bitter to their stomach. <sighs> We're gonna go through this. Omnipotent, Almighty. Possessing infinite power from the old French omnipotent, almighty, all powerful, from ominous, meaning all, potent, powerful. We're talking about God. Is there anything impossible for God? Yes. Amen. Omniscient, omniscient, possessing knowledge of all things, having universal knowledge. From the Latin omnis, meaning all, scientia, knowledge. Omnipresent, everywhere present, in all the places at the same time. From the Latin omnis, all, every, and present. Yes. Now let's go into the scriptures. Genesis 18, 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord at the time appointed? I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. This is when God approached Abram and gave him the promise. And people would say, this is impossible. People who read said, this is impossible. But God... He specializes in the impossible. Yes. In fact, he, he's looking for impossibles to make yes. possible. Yes. And say, oh, you're playing with words. It says, he's looking for the impossible. There are many impossibles out there right now. Yes. People are in their situations. They're sitting on their couches. I'm in a situation that is impossible to come out of. 
It says, uh, uh, it says, I got this condition, I got that condition, but the Lord says, only believe. Mm -hmm. All things are possible. Mm -hmm. If you could only believe, and that's what he's looking for, somebody to believe for the possible. Wow. Wow. And he found a man that took his word and walked on. In Jeremiah, oh Lord God, Behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretcheth out arm and a stretched out arm and there is nothing too hard for thee. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Wow. Yes, sir. Jeremiah 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. So this is where it goes. Just start touching on flesh and bone. And he's talking to you then. Is there anything too hard for me? Isaiah 44, 24. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself and him alone. Can you say amen to that? That is, that is the Lord. Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible. Yeah. He was talking to the young, uh, the, the young rich ruler. Uh, and he came before the author, the fountain of life, the, the giver of life right before his eyes and asked him, what shall I do? What can I do to inherit eternal life? Yes. And he told them exactly what to do. Sell all that you have and follow me. And he says, and because he had great possessions, it says he turned away. It was the possessions that changed his mind. Mm. And he walked away. And that's why Jesus says, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Luke, for those that are watching, Luke chapter 1, verse 36. And behold, these are all impossible situations. but were made possible. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Weakness, the beginning of perfection. Sub is, is anything too impossible for God? Let me just finish reading all the scriptures. Now. 1953-0506. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Paragraph 4, continuation. Have preached to larger groups. He's telling, I have preached. I have preached to larger groups, of course, but I never did feel any more at home than I do right tonight. Just feel right, like I was right at home. And so now we want to take these next few nights and just chuck them full of prayer and faith and believe God for the impossibles to happen. How many have impossibles in their life? Amen. We're going to start with that. How many have impossibles in their life? Amen. Those that are watching right now, I know you have impossibles in your life. Right now you say, well, it's impossible for me to get to church. Well, what church can I go to? You know, it's impossible. But, but God specializes yeah. in the impossibles. That's right. he, he specializes in the impossible. And in your impossibles... Uh -huh. 
Okay? And said, I hope this helps you. I know it will. This is power. There's power in the word right here. 1954-0306. The unconditional covenant that God made with his people. How many of you just remember, we just read, that God is so determined yes. to save man. Yes, that's right. Uh-huh. Have you ever tried to bring you and your children and they're filthy? They're, they're, they're all muddy. They're all filthy. It's time to take a bath. Ah, they're screaming and shouting. They're running from you and they're and you're trying to chase them down. That's exactly it. Mama and daddy are so determined. They're going to chase you down and bring you to clean you up. You can run as far as you can, as fast as you can. But sooner or later, you're going to run out of strength and they're going to catch up to you. You can be the fastest runner. I says, I have a... Uh, uh, someone had said, you know, um, uh, there's no athleticism in this girl, or whatever. Wow. And I said, wow. Well, I says, I remember going back to in my memory, and I remember my sister Alexis and yes. Yvonne. Uh -huh. Okay. They were track runners. Yes, sir. They ran track. Uh -huh. They were fast. Yes. And I remember one time that the. Um, <laughs> <laughs> some gangsters I think I think it was happy homes I'll just say it like that oh, yeah. I says they left their happy homes to create a happy homes gang <laughs> their homes were not happy so they left their homes and created a gang a gang named happy homes and, and they stole the nice bike that my brother Halito had and, and Halito was uh, in the majors in the majors playing uh, baseball I think he was at uh, zero school just going back to my memory, okay? <laughs> and, and we played uh, Zito baseball. I was in the Cubs, Little League, and my brother was an awesome pitcher, and he got that from my grandpa because my grandpa was a, a minor league, uh, was an all nearly majors uh, pitcher. And Halito was an awesome pitcher. He was a wild pitcher, but he was an awesome pitcher. Uh, again, they took his bike. He had a nice bike, he had a chopper. Nothing like these bikes. These bikes now. He had a straight fork, chopper. Had uh, had mirrors on the side. He had a tuck and roll banana seat. I, I liked it because I remember my sister Alexa and took it, took it, enjoying the, uh, um, going down the hill right here on South Mountain. And when she wiped out, and she got road rash all over it. And and going back to that, <laughs> they chased down these guys, <laughs> and they were so scared of these uh, of these two girls. Alexis Ann and Yvonne, they, 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 they dropped the bike and took off screaming because they, they were running faster than a bike. And they brought it back to little brother, little big brother. <laughs> and, and so they just brought it back. Uh, no matter, just that's why I'm talking about this, no matter how fast you can run, no, no matter what trophies or what right. achievements you have, God will catch up to you. Wow. And when it's at that time, you have to make a choice. Yeah, sure. And why, why did I, I bring right. that up? Is right. that that runs in the family? Oh. That running. <laughs> if you want to run from God, mm -hmm. that athleticism, whatever it may be, uh -huh. it may not be in the flesh, but in the spirit, uh -huh. they run. So if you just view it as that, it says sooner or later, God is going to catch up to you. He's going to have to put you on your back. Amen. He may have to put you on, the, on yes, your back. That's right. He put me on my back. Yes, sir. And Amen. when he puts you on your back, you have no place to run. No. You have no place to look. Mm. You can't look to your left or to no. your right. You say, oh, why did Jeez, it happen yeah. to me? You're going to have to look yes. at yourself and say, I did this of myself. But God has made a way to bring you out of that condition. He may have broken your leg. He may put you on your back. He may put you out of your mind. Because of your, your stubbornness. But God is able to put all things right. Amen. No matter what condition and no matter what the doctors Amen. say. The doctors may tell you it's impossible in your condition. You need to take this pill. You need to take that pill. But they're only treating symptoms. The real thing is, is the need for God. Because only God can put you in your right mind. God is the only one who can give you a new spirit. And the mind is the spirit. Because the man and the man from Gadarene, he was out of his mind. He had a spirit of a legion. He didn't know what he was doing. He had over 2,000 demons in him. One day he was this. One day he was this. One day he was 
himself, but something would trigger him, and then he would be all messed up again. That's right. That's right. The whole, the whole world, the whole place of the gathering said that is one impossible man. Uh -huh. That was one impossible situation. Yeah, yeah. And they got rid of him. We don't want to deal with that impossible. Yeah. Right now we're driving by and coming to church and I see yeah. so many impossibles right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the side of the sidewalk camping up. They're camping up. They're blocking the whole way by the bridge trying to go to traffic. And I said, why is this being tolerated? I see people parking their RVs on the dirt road and everything. I said, the cops should be clearing this out. Uh -huh. Impossible situation. It, it, notice, Abraham, after coming out, now he went and told Sarah. Sarah, they probably been married since they were young folks. Abraham's, say, 27 and her 17, something like that. They had been married, but Sarah was barren all through their young Married life. Wow. Paragraph 88. No children. There they are getting, well stricken in age. Now here's the crazy thing. People will say, well, why, he didn't, why didn't God come and promise that when they were younger? God deals in the impossible. Yeah. He came to them when he was 99 years old and to fulfill his promise. Amen. Yes, yes. And now, God comes down and said, paragraph 89, uh -huh. that he was going to make his covenant and he was going to give Abraham a child by Sarah. The impossibles. Oh. He was going Amen. to do it. There had to be a supernatural change in their bodies. And that's not impossible because the word of God has all these testimonies. And then you can raise your hands. I can raise my hand. It is not impossible. When I testify and I tell people, it says I was a drug addict for, for 15 years on methamphetamine, on crystal, whatever you want to call it nowadays. The devil just changes flavors. It's the same old ice cream. You say, oh, you don't know what you're talking about? Uh, like, like people would say, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. I don't smoke cigarettes. I vape. <laughs> That's healthier. Huh. He, yeah, and that's how messed up people's minds are. You get pneumonia and blow your mind with one puff off of that. An unregulated nicotine. Be a psychotic. Like a, a co-worker. Give me a testimony. He's a co-worker. His wife is, it goes to church, a Christian church. But he goes, I have a, a, a he goes, I smoke. My wife says, you need to stop smoking. So I went to vaping. And the guy's like this. He goes, he's, he, I watched his hands and he's writing. I said, my goodness. I gave him a testimony and he goes, you smoke too? I said, I used to. I says, I says, but God took it away. He says, really? He says, well, I vape. I said, he could take that away too. And he says, and I'll only take that away from you, but put you, he can heal you from that right. shaking. Right, right. And he's all, oh, he started getting shaking all right because I was telling him, I was speaking him to the word of God. Uh -huh. He started shaking, but he said, yeah. I need a break. <laughs> if you could just sit still and receive the word of God. Mm -hmm. and it was only that devil that was getting nervous because he was about to get ca uh, cast out. <laughs> yes, cast out. Amen. The impossibles, he was going to do it. Unconditional Covenant, paragraph 90. Continuation. They was going to have the baby. No matter how impossible it looked, God said so. That's all we have to say. Uh, that's all we have to say. Who said it? Brother Esteban? No. God said so. Is there anything too impossible for God? No. That was God asking the person that was Jesus Christ saying, is there anything impossible for God? The one who was giving the question was the one who created the heavens and the earth. He was in flesh asking him. No matter how impossible it looked, God said so. And Abraham believed God. It was imputed unto him for righteousness and went on.
My, that little heart was fainting. Began to beat up. Why? He knew that the words come from Emmanuel. Did not I say to you, don't fear, you shall see the glory of God? Kept moving on. Jairus said, yes, yes, Lord, that's right. How many remember Jairus in the Bible? Yeah. But before he came to Jairus, how many know where he just came from? He just came from the Gadarene. There was one man that was declared the impossible. It was wrong. It was horrible and impossible to put this man in his right mind. But when Jesus Christ left him, he was clothed and in his right mind. Then he came and he came to shore and he walked through the town. And there was another woman who was impossible situation. This woman had spent all her money. I believe it was uh, uh, 12 years or 13 years of a blood issue. Can you imagine suffering of that? Wow. It's a simplicity. The doctors told her there's an, it's impossible for this to happen. But they continue to take her money. They continue to take her insurance card and go get this test and go get that test. Maybe this doctor will say this and maybe that doctor will say this. You got five opinions about this, this what's happening with you. There is one opinion about that you need to listen to. Not only opinion, but a fact. All things are possible to those who believe. And, and Jairus was a ruler. Can you imagine it? The situation about this man. He was a ruler of a synagogue. A ruler of a church. And, and, and at that time, they said, don't go to that holy roller. This fanatic who's walking around with 12 illiterate disciples. These guys don't even know how to write their name. They are fishermen. They're, they're, they're a rough guy named Peter. He can't even say his ABCs. And they're all walking around with this other guy who they say he's Beelzebub. But this guy at his church, at a synagogue, he said, wait a minute. Stop while you're crying. I've heard of a man who's been raised in the dead. I heard about a man who's been filling the scriptures. And they believed about the scriptures. Amen. Moses spoke of this man. He said, the Lord thy God shall raise up a man like unto me. And they would gather and read the scriptures of him. And said, hold on. Hold on. There is a man here fulfilling scriptures left and right. But they call him Beelzebub. If every other church, every mission on the streets find out that I go to this little mission and ask for prayer... They're all going to turn against me. They're all going to excommunicate me. All my people, they're going to stop paying tithing and offering. They're going to leave me. But there was one man. His name was Jairus. He said, shut up to everybody. He plugged his ears. He said, there is a man. There is a man walking here. Right. I just heard he came from the, man, the land of Gadarenes. A man who had 2,000 demons within him ripping his clothes. Uh -huh. the, the, uh, a Gentile. Yes, sir. All he did is he went to all to the Jews. But he went to the Gentile man and put him in his right mind. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. Then he came. And then he was touched by the hem of his garment. And he turned around and says, Daughter, you are healed. Because it was against the law for a woman to be out in public when she had the issue. Mm -hmm. She had to be home out of sight. But she... She went out there and she, she took a chance. Uh -huh. Said, there is a man. If I can only touch the hem of his garment. Yes, she didn't say, if I can only get in his presence and maybe the hands be laid upon me. Or maybe all 12 disciples will put a prayer, uh, a prayer circle and lay hands on me. Uh -huh. No, she said, but only if I could touch the hem of his garment, yes, that my yes, issue yes, will yes, cease. Yes. It says, well, Jesus Christ isn't here anymore, but you could still. He's not here in the flesh, but he's in the spirit. If you could just yield yourself to the word of God and let the word of God come into your mind and let it touch you. You can make a connection, a common ground like an electrician. Nothing will work until you put that common ground. Amen. I was working on, the, on, on my Dodge truck. I had me and Brother Gilbert. We're... We, we did the mechanics. We got the truck. We, it's a brand new truck. Put shocks, put new A arms, new bearings. That's what we were doing. We were having fun during Thanksgiving. That was the funnest Thanksgiving I ever had. On Thanksgiving Day, then I was bombarded with all this 
<laughs> my pill is better than your pill. My shot's better than this shot. How about this shot? And how about this pill? How about the gospel? And how about the injection of the Holy Ghost in your life? Yeah. That's the injection you should be telling, talking, yeah. pe talking to people about. It says, how did it happen? I got a new injection. If you're looking for an injection of the Holy Ghost tonight, for today, receive it in the name of the Lord. If you're looking, yeah. if you've never taken a certain pill, you say, well, I've been taking all these pills and everything. Try the gospel. Yeah. I said, there are many scriptures and we got many scripts for you. Yes. And that's the word of God. We were connecting all the lights. We had the power. We tested. We stayed there for three or four hours just scratching our heads. I said, what's going on? I said, that one. I connected it. I did everything right. I was shaking it. The light was going on. I said, oh, you got it. You got it. Stop doing it. Okay. And then it will go off. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's one of these things that you order. They don't have any directions. They don't have anything. So you have to figure out yourself. I'm checking all the wires. I'm getting the, which one is the power? Which one is the common ground? There's three wires, and that's what we were doing. All of a sudden, a thought came to me. I said, don't let, I says, but I was tapping into the ground of the light switch. And I go, you know, Gilbert, it'd be so, um, I think I said, bro, I said, Gilbert, what if we had all this time, and all we had to do was just ground that wire to the chassis, and we just looked at each other, and we're like, Huh. <laughs> but I'm tapping into the ground wire and we just looked at each other and we grabbed the wire and I put it right on the on the fender. Right on Boom! The light went on and we looked at each other and we're like, <laughs> Amen. Common ground. Amen. Yes. All you need to do is have a common ground. Amen. If you're out there drinking and smoking and you want to come and serve God, there is no common ground right no. there. But if you allow God in your life and start to read his word and you allow the power of God to flow through you then you ground yourself in the word of God yes. then the power will start to flow in your life Amen. then the word of God will start flowing and start getting rid of those bad habits Lord I really want to get rid of this bad habit Lord I have such a negativity I, I'm 70 years old I'm 60 years old I'm, I'm 50 years old but I'm so negative Amen. let God be yeah. that positive and Amen. ground yourself in the word of God and the power of God will start flowing through you and how simple it is common ground why do people get married because there's something that you have in common uh -huh. why do people come to church uh -huh. because there's something that you have in common Amen. yes I want to hear the word of God I love the Lord Jesus Christ I want to honor the resurrection because he died. He gave himself yes. for me. He yes. shed his blood on Calvary. Amen. Not only did he shed his blood, but he went into hell. He slapped the devil around. He took the keys of his own house. Amen. Kicked the devil and slapped the door on the devil's face. Uh -huh. The devil has no power on you. Amen. That's what you need to understand. Amen. He doesn't even have the keys of his own house anymore. Amen. Who here does he have? The Christian has it. Amen. Amen. He doesn't have the keys. Yes. Unless you give it to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Aye, aye. And Jairus is in this situation. His daughter, that his daughter is dead. His daughter is dead. Mm -hmm. A ruler. I can hear they come close to the house. They're all crying and screaming and going on out there. Making a lot of noise. And I can see the church members standing around saying, uh-huh. You got disgraced yourself. Went down there and showed what you was. That's a good thing to show what you are. I like that, Brother Brown says. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. He says, why don't you go down to that little mission? Show who you are. But the church members say, oh, you go down there, you're going to disgrace yourself. The ruler of the synagogue, you're going to disgrace yourself when you're going to go before God? Now look, here your daughter, she's laying in, in there dead. Jairus just closed his ears up and just kept walking on. Jesus said, don't fear. He didn't. He just moved right on, on to death. Uh, on, on to death. Now, Jairus 1954-08, paragraph 42. Now he's got to believe for the impossibles. But he believed anyhow. 
No matter how impossible it is, if Jesus said it, it's true. That's true. Amen. Take him at his word. That settles it. Amen. Let me let me say that one more time. So for those that are watching, no matter what impossible situation, you're in a situation called the impossibles. Now he's got to believe. You got to believe for the impossibles. But he believed anyhow. Now, if you have a son and daughter that's out there and you want them saved, give them an example. Ask God to show you. Lord, bring them. Save them. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ and be serious about it. Don't play around. But he believed anyhow, no matter how impossible it is, if Jesus said it, it's true. Amen? Take him at his word. He swore by himself. Paragraph 206. No man can come to me except my father calls him. And what did, just stop right now. What did, Jared, what did Jesus say? Damsel, awake. And she uh -huh. awoke. <laughs> Amen. No man can come to me except my father calls him. And when the father calls him, all that comes, I'll give him everlasting life. And we'll raise him up at the last day. <laughs> he swore by himself, 1954, 12, 12. Paragraph 207. God by sovereign election has called Abraham's seed. Then if that type of life was on the inside of that blood cell was upon Abraham who called the impossibles possible called the impossibles that they would be because God said so. What kind of people are the seed of Abraham? Amen. I'm going to pause right there not because I lost a thought or anything I want that to soak for you that are watching they would be because God said so what kind of people are the seed of Abraham yes. no matter what impossible situation I am in God is possible to bring me out of it that's what you should be saying and believing Faith, 1956-0815, paragraph 31. And Abraham took God's word as the impossible till it was made possible. Mary, the virgin, took God at his word and the impossible was made. All you have to do is say, Lord, let it be unto me according to thy word. His word has spoken it. He spoke it. And it shall come to pass if you take his word. Amen. Just like Abraham said. Okay. I'm going to read that once more. And Abraham took God's word as the impossible till it was made possible. Mary the virgin took God at his word. And the impossible was made possible. The whole course of life was changed. Yes. And she sought forth. And she brought forth a baby knowing no man. Because she took God at his word. Amen. You take God at his word. And something will happen within you. You accept God in that filthy dirty manger of your heart. A new birth will begin. A new birth will happen. God will take out your old filthy stony spirit. It will take out your spirit, give you a new spirit. A spirit so you and him can start communing and working together. Because right now your spirit is wrong. Yes. You have the wrong kind of spirit. You don't right. truly, really believe. Uh -huh. But when he comes and gives you a new spirit, yes. yes, let it be according to thy word. Your sons and daughters come to me, show me. Right. God said so. Where is it? God said so. It is written. It is written right here. God said so. If I show you God said so, are you going to believe it? Yes, sir. Wow. God said so. Amen. It's impossible for a woman 
to bear a child without knowing a man. But it was impossible. But God made it possible when she yielded herself to the Holy Ghost, Amen. to the Word of God, to the message that Gabriel had brought. It says, well, an angel said, we are ministering angels. If you would just yield yourself to the Word of God and receive it, let it be according to thy Word. Not a stone's Word. The Word of God. The whole course of your life will be changed. And she brought forth the baby knowing no man because she took God at His Word. That, that's it. How many, how many out there are, are, can say amen to the impossibles? Amen. How many of those were at one time an impossible? Amen. I can tell you I was an impossible and still run into people that say it is impossible. I tell them about what God did for me and they say that's impossible. It says if you approach it that manner, it, says, it will be impossible. That's what the devil tells you and that's what the doctors tell you. It's impossible. But God giving you, God has given us some good doctors good God fearing doctors and they say that we cannot heal we only assist there is only one healer and that is God God can put you in your right mind God can heal that cut God heals the bones for the healing within your body is from within and it comes out only if you will allow it is anything too impossible for God that's the question for you. Let us bow our heads. Now let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we are believing for the impossible, Lord Jesus. We're believing that all things are possible to them that are in Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your word. I'm praying, Lord Jesus, that the word, I know your word, it will not come back void. It's been set forth over the Facebook, over the internet, and these were not done in vain, Lord Jesus. Lord, we, we know your word. We ask that you fulfill your word, Lord Jesus, in each and every one's life, Lord. Lord, we ask that you bring healing, salvation, Put people in their right mind, Lord Jesus. Clothe them, Lord Jesus. Lord, we, we ask that you touch them, Lord. And for those that are here listening, Lord Jesus, we ask, Heavenly Father, we are believing for the possibles, Lord. We may be in a situation that's called impossible, but Lord, we're believing for the possibles, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us give the Lord a clap offering. <clears throat> Brother Ernie, we're going to sing... All hail King Jesus. I have it in D. Well, hopefully, hopefully I can. <clears throat> Usually I start off a little too high. Okay. Let us sing all hail King Jesus. Amen. As we continue to worship. <clears throat> all hail King Jesus.
scene of worship, the windows of heaven are open. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart, for Jesus makes everything right. Considered the impossible. 
Amen. Amen. That's how the world looked at you. It says, oh, yeah, this guy has lost his mind. He's, that is an impossible situation. He'll never change. He'll go in his way and go to hell. That's what they said. But God did the impossible. Amen. 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 And made it all possible. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. 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 You have a word, Brother Alex? Let us. How many of you enjoyed this? Uh, the message this morning, I went home. Yeah. I really, I really got to really excited, you know, because starting with the introductions, just the title alone, the title alone, um, weakness. Nobody wants to be weak. No. Everybody wants to be strong. Yes. We pump iron. We, we, we just want. That's just the way it is. It's human nature. And then he says it's the beginning of perfection. But Brother Ernie started it back there when he says, with the, he started with the uh, the hardest God, the hardest thing for God to do. Yeah. And then that started right there. And I mentioned to Brother Ernie, uh, to Brother Stevan, I said, then I'm directing myself to you out there. It's important if you just go to the internet and check it out in the YouTube, those messages that have been spoken on, You'll find there's there's so many keys there to open locks that are locked to you, yeah. but it's the word. But we have to be faithful to the word and just follow the word. So there's there's so many things I and I want to recap. Brother Stephen keeps going to his testimony of what he was. Well, he's not a liar <laughs> because I was a recipient of all the bad things that he did. I'm his daddy. You need to know that, okay. Then I have a daughter by the name of Juanita. She followed the same plan. But God saved both of them, transformed their lives. Man. They're real. I mean, it's, it's real. They're testimonies. They're, it, it happened. It happened to, to the, I mean, they were so crazy, so out of it. This guy didn't even work. He couldn't work. He was out of his mind. But when God changed them, not only did he go to work, but he believed God, started preaching, started testifying. The same thing with Juanita, but she was already working. And it's one thing that women have. They're more docile. They're, they, they give in, you know. But God transformed her. She'd be testifying, and even people that knew her on the street, one time she was gassing for the truck or the vehicle that she was in. And the people saw her and said, well, that's Juanita, you know. But because she's been transformed, now she's dressing differently and she's acting differently. And what they did, they asked those girls that were there, the gang, the old gang, the old people that she knew, they asked her, would you pray for us? Man. Bad, bad at meeting outside. She Man. was not afraid, not ashamed. Man. She was crazy enough for Jesus. Same thing for verse seven. They're so crazy. They ended up working for Mama Bear. I call Mama Bear my wife, Olga. She just grab her cubs. She, she, they were working there and they were so on fire back yonder in that time that they would actually, people would come to them and they would pray. They would ask for prayer and they would end up praying there at work. <laughs> Is that true? Yes or no? Yes, and they're being healed too. Brother Stephen just said, Yes, and they were being healed too. Okay. That's the God of the impossibles. He does that. It's true. One more thing, and then I'll be quiet, okay? Brother Stephen was talking about the, the, the way people were acting in the traffic situations where it doesn't make sense for them to put up with it. So I, I, I just happen to, and I give testimony, and I talk about it. I'm not bragging about it, but I'm bragging about my Jesus, okay? But he, he gave me a position. I was a cop, a deputy sheriff, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Okay? So it forms you. You're a product of your environment. One of the things I picked up when I'm driving, I'm watching everything. I'm watching traffic, watching people. They're watching me, but I'm watching them. And I'm being more careful now because people... The prophet, Brother Branham, said people will go totally insane. Brother Bernie, our pastor, believed Brother Branham, the prophet, my pastor, 
Brother Bernie Garcia. He said, well, I was a police officer and I shook my head. And I go, wow, that's, that's almost impossible, I said. He says, there will come a time where there will be not enough policemen to control the people. Man. That's what the man said. That's what my pastor said. So I'm driving this, this, this weekend and I'm driving and I want to turn to my wife and start talking to her. I said, look at that guy. He's driving like an idiot. Blah, blah, blah. That's, that's me. That's Brother Alex. Talking to you straight, okay? I'm talking to you. Not you guys here. Out there, okay? So I'm driving and I say, you know, I, 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 I better shut up. I'm just going to follow this guy and I'm following him and I didn't get away from him. But at the stoplight, we stopped and I noticed that he did something kind of weird and, and I'm watching because I'm a police officer. I want to give a ticket. I'm thinking like that. And I have my phone. He says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, this guy's out of his mind. He's whacked out, as they say nowadays. But you know, this guy was so whacked out and so good at it that he's driving and didn't go be to other lines. But there was other drivers going like this on other lines. Those are pretty drunks. But this guy was not only crazy. I'm telling you the truth. Okay. God is my witness to what I'm saying. Okay. It's, if you believe it or not, that's fine. Brother Bram said one of these days people will go totally insane. Okay. We're getting there closer and closer. Okay. So anyway, what's happening is that uh, we're driving and I kept driving. I said, you know, I got a little bit closer to him and I watched. I said, well, he's probably acting kind of crazy. I know that. But is he fighting with his wife? Is he fighting with his girlfriend? Because he's moving this way. And he's driving like this. You know, I, I don't have a mic. Uh, uh, I'll get the microphone. I'll show, I want to show you. I want to demonstrate. And he's driving. He's driving and he's going like this. And I thought he was fighting with his wife. And he's talking like preaching or, or dancing or saying some crazy things. So I looked closer and I looked to the right side. And instead of a passenger... There was an upside down, it looked like a mop bucket. But it was a wooden bu bucket with wheels on it. And maybe he was singing. But he kept doing something to that. And, and he's going like this. And he's still in the lines. He didn't wave. <laughs> he's going straight. But he would stop. Stop at another stoplight and another stop. Right all the way from 75th. All the way from the 90th Avenue. Right around there. All the way to 51st Avenue, to where I live, 43rd, not 43rd, 4051, had to be 59, 59th Avenue. That's where I dropped off. I, said, I, 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 I can't call the police officers, yeah, because they might say he was singing, he was in the spirit singing or something, you know, acting like this crazy and, and, and driving like that. So if it entertains you what I'm doing, so be it. But I'm telling you, the guy was out of his mind. He kept on going, and kept on going, and people are going out of his mind. You see people walking with her like this, walking like this, just walking. They're down and up because they're so drugged up. It's a gathering spirit still out there. Spirits never die. Okay. So what we preached this morning, what we heard this morning, is the truth. And I can attest to it, not because of the word of God, but I can testify about a seven that God has changed them. Okay. Amen. And there's no power to the apostles. We got another son that he, he needs help. He needs divine intervention. That's what God can give you. He'll give you divine intervention if you just let him. Let him in. Okay. So I I felt kind of bad because I couldn't I couldn't call a police officer, call DPS, you know, because that, that's normally what I do. And they, they get uh, stopped. It's an old habit that you that you get, but uh, it was uh, something true, and uh, it's. I want to tell Brother Ernie, Brother Ernie uh, Borunda, who's convalescing right now, and I want to tell you that uh, we're going to be resting up this evening. Uh, we 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 have a lot to preach on. We have a lot of information, but we we haven't taken a vacation. We're just beaten up and tired. We also are getting ready for our. Uh, this next week, this next Sunday, we will have a regular service. We'll be have visitors from uh, from all over the place, from Arizona, and then we'll have our brother Gilbert uh, Giannis will be returning. Uh, 
and one of the board members will be visited on will be visiting us and he might just uh, continue his uh, testimony and then we'll have our have our, uh, our our teaching and we do have some teachings that are powerful and uh the, the, that god has given to us telling the wife this morning i said something about i says could you remind me about this because this morning i got up and the thought came to me all because of this incident and she she didn't say i was crazy but she probably thought it was mad but because you know eventually this is going to happen the prophet said this world is going to go totally insane yeah so you have an option okay as i talk to you you have an option to become crazy in the lord man get sane man work for a living support your family be a man or be a woman a lady get some of that old-time religion or you'll be a good citizen also for the united states or in mexico or whatever whatever country you're in <laughs> you become crazy no the old timers would think he, this guy's on track he's on track the old time apostolics that's what i'm talking about it's the old apostolic doctrine okay so uh, they're fixing the cameras i don't know if we're okay but uh we'll, we just want to say god bless you the lord be with you amen thank you brother Stephen, could you uh dismiss him in peace <laughs> god is good how many of you uh enjoyed the message this morning amen. uh thank you thank you i re we really did thank you god bless you brother Stephen. you're gonna make me want to continue singing <laughs> <laughs> there's only one way of escape there's only one way of escape it's not at the uh, the green cross and get your medical card and and calm your nerves for a couple minutes you know what I'm talking about uh -huh. there's plenty of people that go to that uh, <clears throat> what is that uh, green leafy substance yes <laughs> they go to the the clinic <laughs> there is even a methadone clinic <laughs> there's a methadone clinic where they try to get you from the from the street drug heroin and then you get hooked on methadone and, and that's what the doctors uh, they give you that and then you're still a prisoner take you from one prison to another prison that's crazy you're on one prison into another prison uh, um, I, you're going to make me want to sing, give me that old time religion, but <laughs> um, let, let us bow our heads. We'll dismiss with the word of prayer, and then we're going to continue to, we'll sing, take the name of Jesus with you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for so many things, Lord Jesus, that you have provided for us, Lord. We thank you for salvation, for your blood, for peace, joy, love temperance, faith, justification, sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus. We thank you for being the author and finisher of our faith, Lord Jesus. When we did not have faith and we didn't know what to do or what to think or, or how to get out of a situation, you came and gave us faith in you. But you loved us first and created faith in us to love you, Lord. That's how beautiful you are. You did it all by yourself, Lord Jesus. Nobody did it but you alone, Lord Jesus. You created love in us. You gave us faith, Lord, to believe in you and to love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all things. Dismiss us from this place, Lord, but never from thy presence. We ask all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing. Take the name of Jesus with you, and you're dismissed. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and the cold. His great joy and comfort give you.
precious day.